Very good evening to one and all. Welcome to Azure Tech Channel. This is Dr. Sangeeta. Um, before uh, going to the topic, I wish a uh, very happy Onam. Uh, today, uh, we'll uh, deal a topic on uh, Kingdom Animalia for Class 11 Standard. Kingdom Animalia. So, if you take this uh, Kingdom Animalia, it is comprising of millions of animal species and studying them without a basic classification may lead you to confusion. Okay, so in addition to this, there are several new species of animals being constantly discovered. So for this, the classification is very essential for identification and naming and assigning a systematic position uh, to the newly discovered species. So this animal kingdom is uh, classified uh, uh, resembling the characteristic features. That is animal kingdom is classified mainly based on the closely resembling characteristic features. So this uh, how can you define uh, kingdom animalia is they are eukaryotic. They are eukaryotic. They are multicellular organisms and heterotropic nutrition. So this eukaryotic means they will be having a well-defined nucleus. So multicellular organisms, they are having so many cells. And heterotropic nutrition is that they cannot prepare the food by itself. Instead, they will be depending on the others for their food. So that is heterotropic nutrition. So if we can define in the animalia, the three main characteristic features. One is the eukaryotic ductus. They will be having a nucleus, well-developed nucleus. And second, they are the multicellular organisms and they have the heterotropic nutrition. Okay. So, they include about 35 phyla of which 11 are considered as major phyla. Almost 99% of animals are invertebrates or the animals without the backbone. So, they have been categorized into two types. One is called as invertebrates. The other one is the vertebrates, that is you call it as non-vertebrates. Alright, so invertebrates in the sense they do not have a backbone. That is the difference you wanted to understand. Invertebrates, they doesn't have a backbone. The vertebrates, they'll be having a backbone. So, uh, as I already, uh, as I told you, 99% of animals are invertebrates or animals without a backbone. So the remaining represents the vertebrates of animals with a backbone on the basis of the presence or absence of notochord, that is a vertebral column, the animals they may be categorized into two groups. They are non-chordates or and chordates. They are non-chordates or invertebrates and the vertebrates are called as the chordates. Okay, now we'll see the basis of classification. Why? What is the basis? What is the basis for your classification is? Multicellular organisms, they are structurally and functionally different, but they possess certain common fundamental features such as the arrangement of cell layers, the levels of organization, the nature of sealum, uh, the presence or absence of segmentation, notochord and the organization of the organ system. So these are the basis of classification. Now we will go to the levels of organization, levels of organization. So the all members of Kingdom Animalia, they are metazoans. What is metazoans? They are multicellular animals. They are metazoans in the sense, they are multicellular animals that is they exhibit different patterns of cellular organization. The cells of the metazoans, they are not capable of independent existence. They are not capable of independent existence. So among the metazoans, if you take, the cells may be functionally isolated, that is separated or similar kinds of cells may be grouped together to form what? First, cells. Cells will form what? Tissues. Tissues into organ. 
organ into the organ system. First cells, tissues, organ and the organ system. So if you take some animals that is uh, basic level of organization is seen in the sponges. The cells in the sponges they arrange as a loose aggregates. They do not have the tissues. That is the cellular level of organization. The phylum porifera that is the sponges they do not have tissues. They have only the cellular level of organization. The level of organization is seen in sponges. The cells in the sponges they arrange in loose aggregates and they do not form the tissues that is they exhibit the cellular level of organization. So in sponges the outer layer the outer layer you call it as the pinacocytes that is the plate like cells that maintain the size and structure of the sponge and the inner layer is called as the, the inner layer is formed of coenocytes. So it is the outer layer is uh, we are talking about uh, the cells and cellular system that is the sponges you have uh, uh, that is the outer uh, layer you call it as pinacocytes they are called as the pinacocytes that is the outer layer and the inner layer you called as coenocytes they are called as coenocytes all right so these are the flagellated collar cells that create and what is the main function? They will maintain the water flow through the sponge, thus facilitating their respiration and the digestive functions. Okay, that is the uh, cellular level of organization, organization in the case of sponges. So, uh, we have talked about the cellular level. Now, talking about your tissue level of organization. This tissue level of organization in some animals, cells that perform the similar functions they are aggregated to form tissues, right? So, uh, the cells of a tissue, they, what they do, they integrate in a highly coordinated fashion to perform a common function due to the presence of the uh, nerve cell and the sensory cells. So, this tissue level of organization is exhibited in the diploblastic animals. Diploblastic animals having two layers. That is, it is found in the case of that is nidarians. It is called as a nidarians. So the formation of the tissue is the first step towards the evolution of the body plan in the animals. That is, you, you, you will see it in the final cylindrata. So we have studied the cellular level of organization examples. The tissue level of organization, we have found it. Now, organ level of organization. Organ level what? Different kinds of tissues will form what organ system. So they perform a specific function, is it not? So this organ level of organization is a further advancement over the tissue level of organization and it appears for the first time in phylum Platyhelminthus. They are found in the Platyhelminthus and it is seen in the other uh, higher phyla also. And Organ system of uh, organization. What is that organ, that organ system level of organization? The most efficient and the highest level of organization among the animals is exhibited by flatworms, nematodes, annelids, arthropods, mollusks, echinoderms, and chordates. So, this, uh, the tissues, they organize to form the organ and the organ system. So, each system is associated with a specific function and they show the organ system level of organization. So, what do they have? They have highly specialized nerves and sensory cells. They coordinate and they integrate the function of the organ systems which can be very primitive and simple or complex depending on the individual animals. So, if you can take the example, uh, if you take the digestive system of uh, Platyhelminthus, it has got only a single opening to the exterior which will serve both as in uh, mouth as well as the anus and hence it is called as an incomplete digestive system. So, the digestive system is incomplete in the case of uh, uh, Platyhelminthus. Okay, from Ascalminthus to Cordates, all the animals they will be having a complete digestive system. So, in the case of incomplete digestive system, it is there in the Platyhelminthus. 
from the ascalmanthus to cordage all the animals they will be having a complete digestive system with two openings one with the mouth and other one with the anus and similarly if you talk about the circulatory system if you talk about the circulatory system it is one is of open type the other one is of closed type one is of open the other one is closed type so in which the blood remains filled in the tissue spaces due to the absence of blood capillaries that is arthropods mollusks echinoderms and urocordates they are the closed type in which the blood is circulated through the blood vessels of varying diameters that is arteries veins and capillaries as in annelida cephalopods uh, i mean uh, cephalocordates and vertebrates now uh, the so uh, this uh, topic i covered uh, this Uh, kingdom and mammalia definitions, and we have seen the the cellular level, the tissue level of organization, organ system, uh, organs and the organ system, and the circulatory system. So I think uh, you might have understood uh, the contents in this. And in my next class, I will be uh, uploading some uh, other uh, that is the diploblastic and uh, diploblastic organization. Uh, and then now we will uh, see about uh, the different uh, phylum and the characteristics in my upcoming video. Thanks for watching, and please uh, don't forget to uh, uh, press the bell icon and please subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot.